John Lindsay was the man you had the crush on your entire life, the boy you wanted to date in high school that you just thought was the greatest thing on earth. John Lindsay broke your heart. And, you know, I was of an impressionable age when John Lindsay was mayor. And my comment when I put him on my list was, John Lindsay had the vision. John Lindsay was the Camelot. John Lindsay was Kennedy of New York, John F. Kennedy of New York. John Lindsay made you want to believe that politics was a fair game. When John Lindsay strode down Fifth Avenue in the nuclear disarmament campaign, your heart was beating faster, and you wanted to believe in everything he did. Unfortunately, John Lindsay was not the greatest mayor, even if he was the most inspirational mayor. <clears throat> well, I think it's fair to say that John Lindsay was the most glamorous mayor New York ever had, or ever has had, so have, so have. I mean, he was relatively young, relatively rich, absolutely good looking and articulate. To me, he's very similar to John Kennedy, and many of the same issues. Uh, you know, all hat and no cattle, as the Texans would say. The man did have a big heart. Um, he really cared about civil rights uh, in the nation, but also in the city. He was responsive to communities that hadn't really gotten uh, equal attention from City Hall. Uh, you know, I think in that sense, a lot of his great achievements stem from his sort of personal compassion and understanding of uh, of the position of black people in New York. You know, in retrospect, we know he wasn't hurt, but he walked down the streets of the ghettos while the city was burning, in the middle of the street. Easy target for anybody with a gun in a window. Now, I'd like to think I would have had those kind of guns, but it's easy to say in looking back, well, you know, nobody took a shot at him. And he had police all around him, yeah, but they couldn't have protected him. And so I think his personal appearance, but more, not this, he wasn't just doing it as appearance, his heart was in it. Lindsay was mayor of New York at a time when it was very difficult to be mayor of any northern or midwestern city in America. Um, if you look at uh, how incumbents do in the elections of the late 60s and early 70s, an extraordinary number get turned out of office during that period simply because they're incapable of performing up to the standards that citizens expect of, of a mayor. And it's not because they're all crummy mayors per se, it's because it's so difficult uh, to do uh, what a mayor is supposed to do in the late 60s and early 70s during this period of urban crisis. Um, Lindsay, you know, whatever else you may have to say about him, kept public support through this period where it was extraordinarily difficult to do so. And a lot of that does have to do with how he performed uh, as mayor. John Lindsay started his time as mayor with a terrible labor dispute. And he had nothing but problems during his mayoralty. At least in legend, the transit strike when he first became mayor. and. Um, he blinked against Mike Quill, the head of the Transit Workers Union, and gave in, more or less, to the union demands, which a half century later, the city still can't afford. Lindsay was willing to talk to Mike Quill. Lindsay was willing to talk to anybody. So what he did was he introduced into New York a sense of fairness and reaching out that I think, think formed a basis for every mayor since them, since him that you must talk to everybody, that you really have to be the people's mayor to be the mayor of New York. It's, it's also very difficult to view Lindsay without thinking of the fiscal crisis. That's ultimately, uh, you know, that, uh, that might ultimately be the reason he's in the middle of this list instead of towards the top, is that um, he, ultimately has to bear some responsibility. You know, he didn't know how the national economy was going to turn in the 1970s. And there were structural forces outside his control, far outside his control. Nevertheless, it is under his watch that the city starts this um, 
short-term debt financing, which ultimately is going to be the proximate cause of the fiscal crisis. Uh, so I think if you want to talk about his failures in office, it really it has to start there. You know, whether or not he's primarily to blame, uh, he does bear some responsibility for it. Lindsay would have done fine in an environment in which in the external world, i.e. Albany or Washington, was going to pick up more and more of the bills. But what you see is the beginning of a turn against cities by larger governments, saying we can't afford this. And Lindsay in some ways takes the heat for that because um, the city's finances began to spin out of control while he was mayor. Crime was heading up. Huge white flight from the city. Poor immigrants, poor blacks from the south, uh, from the Caribbean were pouring into the city. So you have a dem demographic pattern increasingly unable to support the services which he had promised to the poor. And the man was facing New York in the worst of circumstances. To a large extent, you assess a mayor, you can assess a mayor on a lot of criteria. One would be how well he did in dealing with people, how well he handled events. But there's another criteria, set of criteria, which is how did he change the city? What was the legacy that was lasting? In Lindsay's case, there's not a great lasting legacy. It's also interesting, he never carried one time any borough other than Manhattan. Let's say there are 10, you know, five boroughs times two elections. Eight times he lost the outer boroughs. No, it's 100% of the time he lost the outer boroughs. The sense, especially among Catholics and white working class people, was this mayor only cares about the rich and the poor. He doesn't care about Staten Island. He doesn't care about the Bronx. He doesn't care about this. And um, they left. And quite simply, they left. They left the city for Long Island or for Westchester or for New Jersey. I, I actually am surprised he ranked that high on the list. I ranked him lower because I think that Lindsay contributed to the decline of New York rather than was reactive to it. I think Lindsay made some bad decisions with labor. He didn't know how in the end to uh, put the lid on some of labor's unrest, and I'm a very pro-labor person, but he really had a hard time. He did not know how to cope with crime. That was the probably the single most critical issue was New York's rising crime rate. And most importantly, he was unfortunately the mayor during New York's weakest financial economic period. And that he was not responsible for. That was the building up over a period of time before Lindsay. And yet when Lindsay was there, it got worse, and he didn't know what to do.